This is the Frenchie. And this is one of our favorite flies to use on the bottom of our Euro rigs. Um, the anchor fly, also known as the, the point fly. Um, and you can also use this as your dropper fly, the fly that's above that. But most of the time we're using this as the, the point fly or the anchor. Um, and you can tie this in a bunch of different sizes. This one happens to be a size 10. A um, little on the big side, I suppose, but kind of picked that for the video just so you could see it a little easier. But, um, but yeah, it makes for a really good point fly. And just because it's so simple, you don't feel bad if you, if you end up losing a bunch of these. That's the beauty of these, these Euro Nymphs is they're so simple that um, they're kind of semi-disposable. So, uh, But anyway, this is, yeah, this is the Frenchie, and we've caught hundreds of fish on this thing, and it's, it's just a template. So this is just sort of a, a template fly. You can swap any of these things out for different colors. Um, traditionally, this fly is done with the muskrat gray pheasant tail as the body, um, and then Coq de Leon as the tail. Um, but for mine and the ones that we kind of run at the shop here, most of the time we just use natural pheasant tail for the tail and the body. It just makes it a little easier. It's faster to tie. Um, that Coq de Leon is stiffer than this, but um, we've caught plenty of fish on this, so this, this template works fine for us. So, And then the rib is just copper wire. Um, on this one, it's a, I think it's a size, yeah, it's a size small. You could use medium, even a brassy. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then the dubbing here is, is orange dubbing on this one. Um, but you could, you know, this is the, the orange on this particular one, but you could certainly use, you know, one popular one is the, the shrimp pink. And I think this is what's kind of the, the traditional one that's used on the, on the pattern officially. So, but you could certainly use this. Um, I've seen them in pink. Pink works really good. Chartreuse works great. Um, you could also use fluorescent yellow. It's really more about just that attracting that, that hot spot right behind that bead. So you could use any kind of hit of color. Hot yellow would be good too. Um, but this one here, the orange with the brown and the copper bead, it's kind of a good good template to start. So, so this one, like I said, is a size 10, and it's the fire hole 516. So it's a it's a barbless hook. It's really stout. Um, we've had no problems with these hooks. Uh, they've been really good to us. But um, you could certainly use some other different styles of hooks that we've got here. And like I said, this is just a template, so you don't have to find the exact hook model. You know, exact wire size, exact color of tail, color of body. It's just a suggestion. You know. That's what a lot of these patterns are. It's just a loose suggestion. You can kind of tweak it to your, to your liking and what you've got sort of available at home. So, um, so that's the Firehole 516. You could also use the Umqua series, the U560 and a 10, or 12, or 14, 16. Um, again, depending on what size you want to do, but that's kind of an equivalent hook there. Um, these are like an economy hook. These are 13 bucks for 50 hooks. So that's a good, good deal right there. You could also run these Gamakatsu J20s in a 10. These are also barbless, kind of a matte black finish, pretty sweet. Um, I've personally caught a lot of steelhead on this hook, um, even though it is barbless. Uh, it does keep them pretty good, so this one's, this one's good. The bend on it, I don't know if you can see that, but the bend on it to the, the hook eye is a little bit less extreme, um, so it ends up looking real sleek when it's tied. So that's one you could also use. And then also this one here, the 4647 from Daiichi. Uh, biggest difference here is that this one is barbed. So if you wanted a barbed option, um, this is it right here. So any of those hooks will work. Don't get hung up so much on the model of hook, but it's just look for that jig hook and something that's not so short shank. You know, these Frenchies need that shank space to, to fill out this body and that collar. So, uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. We do have some lead wire in there, um, which I'll get to in a minute. But I'll kind of touch on this again, but we talked about last time that the whole idea with these jig heads or, or beads is that, you know, the, the slot in these slotted beads allow this bead to sit right, right up and underneath the hook eye. It's kind of hard to get it in position right now, but the whole idea is that a lot of that, this tungsten is so heavy and it's positioned directly underneath your attachment point it's just really gonna help this, this whole hook point, ride hook point up. Um, and so if you, had, if you compare this to like a, like a straight eye hook with a, with a non-slotted tungsten bead, where your weight is, is in line right next to your attachment point, 
it's not inverting the hook at all. So if you put the weight above it, it's now gonna flip the hook like this. So that's the whole kind of idea with these. So, um, so there's your bead. And then this is the wire that we're gonna use. This is the 0.025. And again, just this is just a suggestion. So you can use anything within this range, depending on what you've got on hand, what's available. And unfortunately, we are kind of in a shortage of lead wire right now. Um, this European nymphing thing has taken off so fast that the manufacturers can't keep up. So there's like no wire around. So cord this stuff, it's like toilet paper. So, uh, so we're gonna take a little bit of this wire, you know, four inches, five inches, get the bead flipped. And we're just gonna do like six wraps of this. Okay, that's six. So then with this lead, remember that you can sort of spin this off, should clip right off. And it's a little tougher to do on the back because you got such a short piece. So there's no problem coming in with your scissors here, clipping that lead is so soft that it, it's not good for your scissor blades, but it's, it's not a huge deal. Um, okay, so then one thing I do is take these hemostats and just slightly flatten the lead here so it's able to sit kind of right up in that bead. Might be hard to see for you, but it's trying to get up into that slot. So, so that's kind of our chassis for this fly. Um, that lead is actually, you can skip the lead if you want. Um, but the lead does add quite a bit of weight, which is sort of the, the goal here is to get these flies down as quick as you can. So, um, so we can go ahead and get our thread on here. Jeez. All right, that'll work. So you can kind of start right behind the lead and just try to smooth this out because we're gonna run our pheasant tail over it here. So if you got any bumps or anything, that's where those clamps come into play. You can sort of fix it, smooth it out, flatten it. It's good enough. So you want to end right about there, just as Ben starts. Okay, then run back up to your bead. And this is where we're going to tie in our copper wire. So you're gonna need, you know, six, seven inch piece of this, just so you've got enough of it to handle and get it up and over the hook. So I always lay this in that slot and then cover it all the way down. So looking at something like that. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna get our pheasant tail. And with these tails, you know, the, the quills running up the stem get shorter and shorter toward the tip. The best ones are the ones kind of down here toward the bottom. They're nice and broad. They're really soft and they're long. So um, just go ahead and get yourself a cluster, maybe like 10 or 15 fibers. So it's a little much. You can take a few of these out. That should be good. So that looks like there's eight or 10 in there, which is fine, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but try, definitely try to get the tips sort of stacked, just like you would deer hair. So this is gonna be our tail, and it's gonna be just about the same length as the, the body. So you're gonna have to switch hands, tie that down with one good one, and then get underneath it, okay? and then move your thread forward. So wrapping this stuff is kind of tricky. You sort of have to stay on top of it the whole time, but I like to give it a little twist. And with each turn, you kind of have to come around the hook point. Each turn, keep it sort of twisted. And I like to use my opposite finger and just sort of put the brakes on it, you know? So you do one wrap, pinch it down, and then come underneath your thread and grab it and then do your next turn, finger on top, and come through and grab it. Just helps it from 
if you if you don't pinch it down like that, it's got a tendency to to spin out of control and and fly off the hook. So it's good to always maintain that tension. Okay, so we're up at our bead. You can take your uh, thread, do a couple wraps behind the feather, a couple in front. Okay, so that's that's pretty much locked in. Just do a couple more behind, a couple more in front. So that's good. And then come in nice and close. Get rid of these uh, butt ends. Compress those down. And you definitely want to leave a little gap there um, for the dubbing that we're going to put in. Um, and then we're going to use the wire and you're gonna to have to come in at like a different angle with these wraps. Cause with the pheasant tail, we were wrapping like this forward. With the wire, you wanna do it sort of opposite so the pheasant and the wire are, are crossed. So we're gonna sort of angle back, but still going forward, but just sort of angle those wraps um, towards the rear of the fly and it's gonna ensure that they, they cross. And this ribbing is very, very important because these trout have just tiny little teeth, you know? Real small teeth, but they're super sharp. And it only takes one little trout to get their, their teeth in here. And if you don't have that ribbing, this, this pheasant tail will all fall apart, guaranteed. So the wire is, is crucial, so. Okay, so this fly is like 85% done. Now we're just gonna put in a little touch of this orange ice dub. Like I said, you can use a whole different array of colors, but um, I'm just going with this orange. It's what I've done best with, so. Um, and you don't need much, just a little mess of it. And you can spin it right onto your thread. You know, not much at all. You're just putting in a little hot spot, something like that. Okay. And then fill that gap. It should only take about four wraps. All right, and then get this right behind the bead in front of the dubbing, and then just do a whip finish. And I forgot to mention, but yeah, this is that fluorescent orange Vivas thread, 6 Um And I do like it for the Frenchies because as you can see, it just gives it even a, a little bit smaller but brighter hot spot paired with that dubbing, so. So that's it. That's the uh, that's the Frenchie, and this thing has accounted for hundreds of trout, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trout in steelhead. Um, it's been an absolute workhorse, and and just bear in mind you don't have to follow this template exactly. I mean, find a hook that looks good, um, that's got that appropriate shank length, that's obviously jigged. Um, but you don't have to get so meticulous with following these recipes online. It's just, it's just a template, a, a suggestion. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's the Frenchie and um, probably our number one uh, Euro fly for all species. So I uh, hope you like it. Um, tie some of these up, let us know what you think and subscribe if you haven't already.